All right, it's time for the first Friday reads of the year. First one in a long time since December kind of gets taken over by all of the lists I like to do in December. And yeah, I want to talk about what I've started reading. It's been, I feel like, a slower but still productive reading year so far. And considering I'm starting a new job, I just got my new work ID today. I now work at Cuyahoga Community College if you're in the Cleveland area. And we are the Triceratops, which is by far the coolest mascot I have ever gotten to be a part of. <laughs> I have had some weird mascots in my academic life. This one is the coolest, the Tri-C Triceratops. I think, I don't know if it's a her or him, but I choose to think her name is Stomp. I, I like that. Regardless, big things, lots of textbooks. That's going to be a large part of my reading, but I'm still just going to try and go business as usual and also ignore the fact that I just bought yarn for a project for my friend. We're just going to keep going. But I have sort of gotten back into the groove of reading a little bit. We'll talk about some of the things that I have finished, which isn't like too much, but it's something. <laughs> there was a point where I was doing reading sprints for patrons where I'm like, it's like day seven of the month and I haven't finished anything. I don't really know what that means, but I have finished three things, maybe more, depending on how you demarcate stuff. Cause I've been doing a lot of shorter fiction reading and long fiction reading at the same time. And I think that's where I'm a little out of whack here. <laughs> So let's start with, I think, the first thing I finished. I'm really happy it's the first thing I finished. Um, and that is The Jackalope Wives by T. King Fisher. I'll put up a picture because these are kind of glossy covers. And this is a short story collection by T. King Fisher. It includes a wide range of stories. I actually do think it's a really good taste test of uh, if you're like, I don't know if T. King Fisher is for me. Not that any of her works have been incredibly long, but here you can really see the types of characters, settings, themes. You got dark fairy tale, you got a little bit of horror, you have a little bit of just like old grandma witchy energy. Basically everything that you're used to T. King Fisher playing with outside of maybe her more romantic stuff is in the short story collection and I adored it. <laughs> um, I ended up loving it so much. I asked people in my discord, hey, does, if anyone wants to buddy read it with me, I'm reading this right now if you want to share thoughts. And I shared thoughts on like every story. Not every story was a hit. Don't get me wrong, but I had a really good time with the vast majority of these. Uh, she just gets me. Reading T. King Fisher is like reading a note from a friend. Like I feel like it's like I got a note between classes and I'm laughing at this letter my friend wrote me and it's like, okay, now I got to go to business as usual, but that was a fun reprieve. Um, so brings me joy. Totally get like the voiciness might not be for everybody. And there's this world though. So the title story, The Jackalope Wives, there are two stories in this collection in that world. Maybe there's more, but there were two that I caught. And oh my gosh, I would love more in that world. I don't know if I'll ever stumble upon more, um, but there's this one character who's in both of them and she's really cool. But then also the reimagination of the Southwest and our relationship to the rail system. It was so interesting. So yeah, I like the little details that she chooses to focus on. I like the quirky characters she chooses to bring to life on the page. And I chuckle and I chuckle and I love when I chuckle. So th that was a great way to start my reading year was just reading a few of those stories. And normally with collections, I only read maybe one, maybe two stories a day. I was just reading them until I was done. I was just like, yeah, let's read another story. What else do you got for me? What, what else do we have going on? I will say, I think in general, I like her old lady stories the most. Like when she chooses to write a grandmother or older female character, they're great. I really enjoy them to the point where I like had to check because I was pretty sure T. King Fisher is only in her like 40s or something like that. And uh, yeah, she, she isn't that old. She's just a middle-aged woman, but she really likes writing about old women. <laughs> And I, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it got to the point where I'm like, are you like secretly like my grandma's age? Like you keep writing about people like my grandma, which I love, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing I finished actually just earlier today, because it gets a little more complicated after that, um, and that is Freedom is a Constant Struggle. So Jess Owens runs a nonfiction book club. It's coming back this year. This is the pick that we have. And so I was slowly reading it because a lot of the reviews are like, these are essays and talks that were compiled together. So because of that, there's going to be some repetition. And because I heard there were talks, it's like, well, I want to listen to the audiobook, and it's narrated by Angela Davis. So like, yes. And I'm really glad I went that route and I'm glad I used it. So as I've been back in the Cleveland area, I've had to drive around. I drove to the Cleveland Public Library to get my library card. I had to drive to work. I had to go to the store, you know, I'm driving around, but I don't have like large periods of time. So basically I can get through a chapter or half a chapter while I was driving around and that broke up the book. And I think that was beneficial for me. So I spent a week reading this relatively short essay collection book. And that helps because I definitely noticed the repetition themes, the repetition examples that were brought up over and over again, because they were for different talks. And 
I mean, as someone who's like been to seminars and academic talks and made my own talks, it's like, yeah, you're always pulling from your own stuff. You're not recreating the wheel every time. Um, I actually really liked getting to see the themes that she kept trying to get people to connect with from different angles and repeating herself in different ways. Like I know for a lot of people that was a con of this nonfiction, but I actually generally like that more often than not in nonfiction. That was actually something I also liked in, oh, what is it called? I have it on my shelf somewhere near me. Uh, it's an Uruguayan author, it's the broken, Open Veins of Latin America. That was also repetitive, but I think in a very impactful and important way. Like the repetition is part of the work. It's intentional. It's not a bug. Um, but I think that paired with the fact that I did take it over a longer period of time. And also like I slowed this audiobook down. I just loved her cadence, the way that she delivered her works. Like if I could see her talk in person, I would. She's a great oratory present and especially in a week with meetings and orientation talks and people who don't know how to present. It was a breath of fresh air. It was a breath of fresh air, even if the content is dark and heavy and like just ever around us. Um, but I, I really liked it because it gives you like nonfiction like this, where it's not necessarily I'm learning a lot from it. It's like, yeah, I've already read other nonfiction or seen other talks where I know this stuff, but now I'm given more language to try and help people kind of understand why they're not making the connections completely all the way. And I always find that very valuable. And I think she does also prevent stuff in a cathartic way. Like I've talked about this in other nonfiction we've read in the past, like mediocre. It's like, that was cathartic. Like, did, did I learn anything new? A few things, but for the most part, when the author was angry, I was angry and that was okay. <laughs> so those are two things I finished. And then um, I've been reading um, everything that I needed to reread in Arcanum Unbounded. So I finished this, but I say that, but I am not rereading Secret Histories of Mistborn and I'm not reading Edge Dancer. And those two things are like a large part of this. Um, for that reason, I actually kind of tracked on my story graph all the stories in here that had like separate things, which actually did work out. Um, so the first one I'll talk about is Emperor's Soul, which I actually do just have a separate copy of by Brandon Sanderson. And this kind of proved a concept to me. So this last year, I read Sanderson's Secret Projects, and I have a video on that. And I'm just like, is it me? Is it Sanderson? Like, these are good. Like, I didn't mind them. But none of them were like that magic that that I can't put this downness that I'm used to when I used to read new Sanderson books. And part of me was like, was it just the nostalgia? Like, does this only happen with books that I've just like read by him before? And no, I think he's changing how he writes. And that is fine. But when I read his older stuff, it's just different. It still hits and I think it's him and it's not me. <laughs> like, I mean, my tastes are changing. They are evolving. There are some things he does that I'm not as interested in anymore, but he was doing really interesting things in his early days. And I just, in some ways he's not playing as safe anymore, but in other ways I feel like he's writing. I, I don't know. I don't know how to say it yet, but I, I'm getting closer to understanding why newer Sanderson does not always land for me the way that the older stuff did. And I, I'm getting closer, but Emperor Soul is a extreme example. I've loved this novella. This is the third time I've read it. Um, it's fun for Cosmere fans, for sure. This time, though, I got to read it as someone who just enjoyed the story because a lot of the stuff that you get introduced to an Emperor's Soul in terms of the Cosmere world building was so groundbreaking when it came out. When it came out, we knew investiture was a thing. We did not have any idea what it did and what the cognitive realm was. Like we, I don't even think had words of radiance yet. We had nothing. Um, so this book was just like, woo. And I love the world of Volantris that like it's cell that is placed off. So like all of that's great for me, but actually just like following this artist have to accomplish this impossible task while also trying to escape. This is the perfect story for this length of novella. And I just loved the internal conversations, the external conversations. It, it completely captures me every single time I really love it. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this because we're going to talk about it, not this weekend, but the following weekend. And a couple other stories, two others that I'm sure we'll take more time with. Uh, the Six of Dusk, which I all, this was my second time reading it. First time was like almost 10 years ago. So woo. Um, but again, this was like, oh yeah, this is so cool and dark and atmospheric. Why doesn't he write like this anymore? <laughs> I loved The Six of Dusk the first time I read it and I loved it this time. Um, this is about a man who has to deal with the fact that the world will be changing and he's kind of on the precipice and he's trying to protect the islands that are always trying to kill him. It gave me 
it, it, the islands are really messed up that he travels to, and he travels with his bird companions who have magical powers that you learn about, and he meets this woman, and he's, you know, coming to terms with the fact that the world's changing, but also trying to make sure that death doesn't happen all around them, because one of his birds can show him his death. And he's seeing it everywhere because of a machine that they're trying to turn on. He's like, don't do it. And I just think it's, this does more than some of his thousand page books in terms of like thoughts on colonialism and culture and stuff like that. And I'm just like, ah. again, I think, I think it's thematically where Sanderson's playing it safe sometimes. Maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still trying to come to terms with it, but rereading some of these Arcanum stories that I was most scared to reread really settled it for me. Because similarly, I read um, Silence, Forest Hills. It's the title's too long. This book. Um, this is a book that's really interesting to read after you've read The Fourth Secret Project because there are Cosmere overlaps. And um, this and The Six of Dust, like reading both of those now knowing what I know in the Cosmere was very interesting. Like The Six of Dust references something that at the time I think I missed because it was such an outlandish thing, like an outlandish little sentence to read. I'm like, oh, I did not realize that's what that meant. But now knowing what the Cosmere has been doing, like, okay. Um, you know, having read Tress and all those things, but, um, the Silence one, having read The Fourth Secret Project, um, is interesting because of the overlap in cultures and magic there. But honestly, I just, again, the atmosphere was so good. It was just so good. I had a lot of fun with it. And I liked the um, narrative framework. It has a, a framed storytelling device. And I enjoy that. I always enjoy that. So those are really fun. I read also, there were you know, a couple side misborn stories and stuff like that that aren't really worth <laughs> mentioning. They're okay. They're not very good comparatively to these three. And so we're going to have a large live discussion on that next weekend. And I'm, I'm happy. I was most apprehensive about reading Arcanum Unbounded and actually was very pleasantly surprised. And I finally, after years of saying on booktube, I'm gonna reread Emperor's Soul. I've reread Emperor's Soul, yay, go me. Okay, so I think those are all the things that I finished, the things that I'm in the middle of. I'm in the middle of two things. I think I'm in the middle of two things. And I think I know what I wanna pick up next, maybe. I don't know. I'm a little chaotic these days. I'm trying to go with it. <laughs> and I don't actually know what my audiobook is, so that might determine what my next read is. But I finally started Reaper's Gale and I finished the first part of it. <laughs> oh boy, getting into Malazan again after you haven't read Malazan for a year and a half is a choice. It's a choice. I'm mostly back in my groove, but oh boy. Oh, Putao, you want to tell them? What, what? Come here, come here and you can say hi to people. Everybody, this is Putao. If you haven't met him before, this is my old man. He's almost 17 this year. Yes, you are. Back home, back in your stomping grounds. He doesn't really know that, but he was born like down the street from here. <laughs> All right, you wanna sit next to me on the floor? Behave yourself? No promises. Okay, but Reaper's Gale, I started that. I read the first, like, we'll call it a quarter of it. And it's just so dense and there's so many names and there's so many people and there's so many magic systems and there's so many old gods, new gods, medium gods. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself, but it's dense. It's a lot. Okay, so Hu Tao's trying to knock over the ring lamp. So just, just know if anything shifts, it's his fault. It's not my fault. Um, so that's my long term over the next however long it takes me. It's been a few days since I read it, so I should sit down and read it. But that's like part of my goals for the year is only work for 30 minutes a day. And that is part of it. So for funsies, I picked up and <laughs> I just went to my library today because I'm getting used to the libraries around me. And they only had the large print version of this. So that's uh, the deep sky. And I mean, I do like the, the naked printing of it. Um, and, and it's large print, so this could be very fun. <laughs> and I've started reading this. Um, I have notes in Patreon because <laughs> I'm enjoying it because it's very easy to read because it's like that gripping sort of, oh no, what's happening? Exactly what I thought it would be, sort of sci-fi book. And the issue is that I don't know if the world building makes as much sense to me as it does to the author. And sometimes I get confused and then I, I like focus on silly things sometimes as a reader, like, in a fantasy book, if a character loses their big magical item and it's not referenced where it is lost or that it fell or like it's just not mentioned where it went, I, but Putao, Putao, oh my god, you know like how cats rub against things? Yeah, that, that's what's happening right now. How about you lay down? Lay. Okay. Oh, so when people lose their magical items or whatever, I just like, I'm like, you need to tell me if it's actually lost. Did it get locked behind? Author, did you forget about the magical item that is very important? So stuff like that is not important usually, but like it's something that happens to me. And there was like already in chapter one, a thing that I was just like, what, what's happening here? And I don't think it's that important, but I like, I, I think that's gonna be a slight negative 
to my reading experience is that the larger world building might not be bulletproof for my per current brain reading of it. Cause like, it doesn't need to be like super solid, but there is a certain level of consistency I want or expect from a science fiction novel. So we'll see, especially because this is kind of built a lot around some societal world building. And I'm just gonna have to, to figure it out. Like there's some stuff that I'm just like, why is this chosen to be the solution? Who knows? But it's at least easy. So in comparison to Reaper's Gale, good pairing. And then I think the next thing I might read because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get an arc of this like tomorrow. Um, it's like an arc of the third book is Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. So if I wanna read the third book, I gotta read the second book. And it's right here. And like, I haven't had a horror yet this month. I mean, I had some creepy books by Sanderson, which were like some of my favorite books this month. So like, maybe I should lean into that. And that would meet my other goal of the month, which is to touch two physical TBR books. And like, this was my first TBR book of the month and this could be my second. So, you know, it could happen. I have a whole host of other TBR books. And like I said, I need to figure out um, audio books. I, I do currently have out um, the audiobook for The Hidden Path, which is the second book in the Strange and Stubborn Endurance, because I heard it's like my favorite audio narrator, and I love him. I think it's, um, it's it Vicus Adam or Adam Vicus. I don't know. He's Kieran in Chorus of Dragons, so like, I'm just like, I love him. <laughs> like, truly. Um, so I might do that as an audiobook if I need an audiobook time. And then, because I love Jackalope Wives so much, because T. Kingfisher, I have access to the both the um, and I've told you should read them within cloak succession the clockwork boys and the wonder engines I don't know that duology the centaur duology and I'm like I could also read that so yeah I, I think we're doing okay we're doing okay I got a new yarn project that I'm ready to like try out I got a tbr cart that I built and like I feel like I'm such a nerd. So as we're, you know, moving in and we've had to like acquire new furniture, like we got this cat tree, which if you're a Patreon, you've seen the cat tree and the kittens in it and everything. Um, I got myself a TBR cart, like I said, and I'll, in a future video, there's going to be at least some reference to it. I don't know if I'm going to do a TBR cart tour. If I do, it definitely will be a Patreon exclusive because I'm just too lazy to do production around that. Um, but I love building furniture. <laughs> like so much. So we got these TV trays, we got this cart, I got this cat tree, and I'm just like building things. We've had to rebuild the futon. And I'm just like, oh, I love this. Um, it's like adult Legos, but it's functional. So that's been very fun for me. Um, and similarly, that's what like crochet knitting is to me. It's like, oh, I love following a pattern. And it's at least going to be functional. Like I'm built making my friend a cardigan. So that'll be cool. So yeah, good start to the year. Busy, a little stressful, but not like unwieldy. I definitely, after filming this, need to actually do some like prep work for classes that I'm teaching in two weeks. <laughs> and like, that's another thing. I have to read a lot of textbooks because there's a lot of stuff I know, but I need to read what I'm telling my students to read. And also I'm in charge of certain labs that I definitely can run, but I need to remind myself like parts of the body, like the anatomy. And I'm just like, oh, that's not something I've thought about for years. <laughs> so I'm gonna be doing a lot of learning this semester, but I love doing that, so that'll be great. Um, let me know how the start of your year has been going. Have your goals already been thrown out the window, which is totally fine if it is. I am not judging you. Um, or have you been able to hold on to them? Have you been enjoying the new reading journal you've set up or having the fresh clean slate on Storygraph or Goodreads? Let me know how your year's treating you. If you want to just leave an emoji to let me know you're here, leave a bunny because I think that's the closest we're going to get to the cover of Jackalope Wives, which is currently the winner of the year so far because the amount of joy I had whenever I was like, oh, I can read another story of this or when I was anxious and I read a story of this and it helped winning both ways. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.